Hello, everybody. It's Wednesday. We're in the middle of the week, and we're in the middle of an incredibly close week on House of Games as well. Somebody, we don't know who it's going to be, is going to win this trophy. It's going to be one of these four people, and it's been a real battle so far. Is it going to be Kevin Clifton? <laughs> Kima Bob? Victoria Derbyshire? Or JJ Chalmers? <laughs> now, Kima and Victoria. A win each mm. in the first two shows. Wow. But it's been close, hasn't it, both days? It's been mm. really close. But now I feel like we can relax, Kima. Mm -hmm. We can really start to enjoy it 100%. now. hundred <laughs> percent. Look, I didn't even put a lot of effort into this outfit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm relaxed, you know baby. I'll tell you two people who can't relax yet. That's JJ and Kevin. Mm. They've yet to, but it's been so close. Kevin, let's yeah. take a look at the weekly leaderboard, shall we? Because you've yet to win a day, but... <laughs> You're right at the top of the leaderboard there with Victoria. Yeah. A couple of second places. But while they get lazy on their outfits, me and JJ have put on our uniform navy collars. Oh. oh. So we're, they we're mean ready business. for action. Wow. Yeah. It could, genuinely, they could be your bodyguards. <laughs> Look at the two of them. You know what I mean? Mm, maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe. Maybe. <laughs> JJ. JJ. You get to get a win. Obviously, very competitive. It's, it's, the, it's the answer smash. But hasn't it been close between all four? It's been of... really close, and I got myself right in the mix last time, and then I just yep. sat there watching people just get their hands <laughs> on the buzzer before me. Now, Kima, so... last time you won a House of Games decanter, uh, should we take a look at today's prizes? This is what you could be walking away with, whoever wins today. Wow. There is a hoodie, a dartboard, a cool bag, the sparkling wine, and a passport holder. The most disappointing prize of them all. <laughs> Uh, JJ, what would you fancy if you were uh, today? If the mannequin comes with it, I'll take the hoodie. You take the hoodie, <laughs> Victoria? The fizz. Fizz? Yeah. I really wouldn't if I were you, but listen. Really? <laughs> so long as you don't drink it. OK, yeah, <laughs> ornamental fizz. Yeah, yeah. ornamental fizz. Yeah. Kima? I want to get into this culture of this country so bad, I'd go dartboard. Darts, lovely. And Kevin? Well, I was going to say dart, but how do you feel about having darts thrown at your face? I don't. Listen, mm. I'm still here. Yeah, OK, <laughs> fine. The dartboard. Dartboard it is, then. What a week it's been so far. Anybody's game. It really, really is. Anyone could win today. Anyone could win the week as well. Let's get on and play our first round, shall we? Which today is... <laughs> Highbrow, lowbrow. I'm going to go along the line. I'm going to ask you each two questions, OK? The first question will be a very highbrow question. <laughs> the second one will be a lowbrow question but they both have the same answer, OK? You get two points if you get it straight from the highbrow one, one point if you leave it to the lowbrow. Kevin, a highbrow question for you. Last occurring on Earth during the Pleistocene epoch between 2.6 million and 11,700 years ago, what two-word term refers to a geological period of mass glaciation? Um, ice Age? I mean, makes there's a lot of long words in there, but that feels like <laughs> yeah. maybe that's what that means. And also, I can think of a lowbrow question mm. that would have the same answer. Mm. So let's find out. Let's see if you want to change your mind when you see your lowbrow question. Sid the Sloth and Manny the Mammoth first appeared in which 2002 animated film? Ice Age. Looking with Ice Age for two points? Yes. Absolutely right. Right. Clifton. Right. Two for you. That's a good start. Let's put down a marker. Yeah. <laughs> Kima. Yesterday's winner. Two oh, points for you if you Thank can you for reminding me, Richard. Wonder if you can answer this for two points. In chess, the strategy known as the King's Gambit opens with a player moving their king's pawn to which square? Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. A3. A3, that sounds. And also, if, if the lowbrow question is about paper sizes. Then we're doing great. Yeah, exactly. Let's find out what is your lowbrow question? The Inbetweeners was first broadcast on what channel? C4. C4 for one point. Ah, oh, no. Oh, uh, anyone can buzz in if they wish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. Have you ever right. seen someone buzz in so quickly in your life? <laughs> JJ. Oh, I shot in the air in the game. Uh, it'll be the, the fifth one in. E4. Oh. E4. Oh. Of course it was. Yeah. Okay, JJ. <laughs> Well done. Well done. I'm not taking this seriously at all. No, no, well listen. done. Five. We're all behind you. I immediately went C4 as well. Victoria, Monday's champion. Two points if you can get this highbrow question. In his acclaimed international bestseller, how does Malcolm Gladwell describe the moment when ideas, trends or social behaviour cross an important threshold before spreading rapidly? 
Oh, I have, my mind is totally blank. Should we go lowbrow for a point? Yeah, go on. Okay, lowbrow question, same answer. Lucky Stars is the celebrity spin-off of which daytime quiz show? I don't know. No, it should time you out. As soon as Victoria's timed out, people can buzz in if they wish. Kevin. Tipping point. Tipping point. Oh, my oh, gosh. Right answer. Well played, Kevin. Yeah. Wow. Well done. Very nicely placed. A great book as well. JJ, oh. question for you for two points. Right. In George Orwell's allegorical novella, Animal Farm, which character is said to represent Leon Trotsky? Oh. I remember doing it at school as well, but Stalin's the only thing that's in my head and it ain't him. Uh, Move straight on to Lowbrow, if you fancy. Yeah, I mean, it's, it sounds like it's going to be maybe one of the pigs, but well, mm. anyway. Okay, let's uh, take a look at your Lowbrow question for one point, same answer. Which Christmassy cocktail is made using avocado and lemonade? Oh. No. Nope, so we'll time you out. Uh, anyone who wants to buzz in can. <laughs> This Victoria. can't be right, because I've read Animal Farm and I don't remember Snowball, but that's the only Christmassy cocktail I'm thinking mm. of. Snowball. Let a guess. Absolutely right. Done it. Hey, well, oh. the pig, the an Animal Farm name, isn't it? Yeah, and he's one of the pigs. Snowball, you're quite right about that. Kevin, back to you. A two-pointer here. OK. You've got your last two-pointer. Which of the so-called periods of Picasso's artistic life lasted from 1901 until 1904? And I know nothing about this stuff. Straight on to lowbrow? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Your lowbrow question for one point. You've got enough points already. <laughs> Which boy band represented the UK in the 2011 Eurovision Song Contest with the song I Can? Boy band. Blue? Is it blue? <laughs> it is blue. <laughs> Kima, a question for you for two points. In J.D. Salinger's short story sequence, which member of the fictional Glass family writes the letter known as Hapworth 16, 1924? Ah. Well, I'm just going to throw... I'm just going to throw it out there. Charlie. Charlie? It was Charlie, but i got to see that lowbrow answer before I know that I'm so, so right. <laughs> Let's find out, shall we? Here's uh, the answer to this following question, Charlie. In The Simpsons, what is Principal Skinner's first name? I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to be like Bernard, Milton, Millard. Ah, Bernard. I know this. Is it Bernard? It is not. Oh. Anyone want to buzz in? Oh, Victoria just beats JJ. <sighs> Mike? Is it Mike? That's, that's, the, that's the streets. Oh. JJ? I want to say Seymour. Ah, oh. is it Seymour? Well, yeah. JJ. Mike Skinner. He's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> well played, JJ. Victoria, two points for you if you can answer this. Helen Alving and her son Oswald are characters in which play by Henrik Ibsen that was first performed in 1882? Lowbrow, please. <laughs> Your lowbrow question is... In which BBC sitcom does Simon Farnaby play a dead politician with no trousers on? Mm. <laughs> Ghosts. Ghosts. Absolutely right. Hey. Victoria, one point. JJ, two points for you if you can answer this. In 1610, the explorer Henry Hudson reached which extension of Hudson Bay in Canada? Newfoundland? Newfoundland? Okay. Newfoundland, Newfoundland. 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 I think that's how they say it. When... However they want to say it. Let's take a look at your lowbrow question. Hold Back the River is a oh. single by which 2016 Brit Award winner? Oh. Well, no. I'm, I'm sticking with my highbrow answer, but I don't so think we, it's we're right. We're going to say Newfoundland. <laughs> still the answer. Yeah. OK, is it Newfoundland? <laughs> it's incorrect. Anyone want to have a go at this? <laughs> Kima. Chicago. Is it Chicago? <laughs> it is not, I'm afraid. Yes, Victoria. Ella Henderson? Ella Henderson? <laughs> no. It is not. <laughs> it's I know, Ella Henderson's just off the top of Hudson Bay. I know, Bay. I know. I, just, <laughs> I think, who the hell sang yeah. Hold Back the River? Yeah. 
Kevin. Is it James Bay? Of course it is. James Bay. Well done. Yeah. Oh, well done. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lovely end to the round, isn't it? Lovely. That's a good answer as well, isn't it? James Bay and James Bay answer both of those questions. And that's the end of our first round. Good round for Kevin there. Let's take a look mm. at our scores. One round in. Yesterday's champ, Pima, yet to get off the yes, mark. Yes, so but my far. avatar is still cute. <laughs> You've got a lovely <laughs> avatar. Uh, Victoria and JJ, you got two points each, but three-point lead. Kevin Clifton wow, well with five done, points. Kevin. How about that one Thanks. round in? Thanks. Let's play round two, shall we? Today it is... Reichard Oshman's Hausdischspieler. Kima, the player in last place, gets to choose their partner. It is you today. Wow. Would you like to play with? Do you know what? I'm sitting here with Kevin. I'm going to stay right here with Kevin. Going to stay with Kevin. Worked yep. yesterday, didn't it? Yeah. Yep. Kima and Kevin, you're a team. Victoria and JJ, you're a team. Mm. Now, in this round, I'm going to show you six categories. They are here. They are all general knowledge questions in different languages. So I'll be asking you questions in different languages and you need to work out the answer. So you've got Chibo, Olimska Spelen, Istra, Televizia, Sodkefield, and Vekir. <laughs> What do you fancy there? Can I do number four? I think I feel like it's like television. television. Yeah. Number four? Sure. Televizia, and that is Polish for television, OK? Good. Once again, to the Polish communities of Great Britain, I apologise for my Polish pronunciation. Na jakim instrumenci muszczynin rarauf ze serialu telewizyjnego i mapti? That's your question. <laughs> Here are your three answers. <laughs> na violoncelli, mm. na pianini, mm. huh. or na saxophony. Ah, see. Yes. OK, so we're, we're, the Muppets. Yeah, what musical instrument does Ralph, Ralph play? Ralph. Is that the, oh, the sort oh. of dog that plays the yeah. piano like that? Yeah, man, I don't know. Should we go with that then? I'm but down, na, I'm na, down. Na, Pia, pia na pia ni. Ni. Okay. Have you just answered a question in Polish completely right? So let's find out. Is it na pia ni? <gasps> Absolutely right. Very well done. Cool. <laughs> Luku, Luku can speak <laughs> Polish <laughs> now. And the question was, you're absolutely right. Which musical instrument does Ralph play in the TV series The Muppets? Cello, piano or saxophone? Very well played. Love it. Um, oh, sure. JJ and Victoria, you have a choice to make. What category would you like? Um... Uh, yeah, what takes your fancy? Polish was my one. Oh, what a shame. Do you want to do number two, then? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Yeah? Yeah, no, I'm embarrassed yeah, myself. <laughs> uh, Olympiska Spelen, which is the Olympic Games, mm -hmm. in Swedish. Vilken sport var med for første gangen sedan 1904 i de Olympiska Spelen 2016? which first appeared in the Olympics in 1904 and then again and in 2016. And here are your possible answers. What was reintroduced? I'm going to kill yeah. Golf. That's it, I think. Squash. Cricket. Oh, I assume the answers are in English. Yeah. It's, um... It... Oh, no, they say them the same, apparently. Yes. Yeah. Ah. It's golf because squash and cricket are not in the Olympics. And yes, it was reintroduced and it was won by Justin Rose. So you're going to go golf? Uh, I, I think so. With a lot of extra information. <laughs> it, fe it feels like you're going to say golf to me. Uh, so, JJ and Victoria, have you scored a point for golf? <laughs> Absolutely. Well no. played, okay, JJ. Oh. And yet, let's take a look at the question. In 2016, which sport was reintroduced? You're quite right. And yeah, those, uh, that's how the Swedes say all of those sports wow. as well, rather fortunately <laughs> for me. Golf, right. squash and cricket. Right. Kima, Kevin, another choice for you now. It's been a successful oh. round so far. Let's go with number six, shall we? Yeah, go yeah, with yeah. That's German <laughs> for transport. Oh. Oh. Verkehr. Which is your like, I suppose reality. like vehicle. Yeah, maybe. yeah. Mm -hmm. Verkehr. So here's your question. 2014, wurde in welcher dieser britischen Stadt ein Stratzenbahnetz eröffnet? That is your question. Yes. Self-explanatory, okay. I hope. And your possible answers are Edinburgh, Cardiff, or Belfast? In 2014, I, I don't think which which of these, of these British cities had something happen in it? Had something open, a street something open. Oh, so I'll just say one. Just say one, because I Great. really don't know. Great. Phenomenal. I, I want to see Belfast. Let's see Belfast? Why not? Let's take a look. Is the answer C, Belfast? No, it's Cardiff. <laughs> 
not Belfast, oh. so you think it's Cardiff. It is not Cardiff either. Oh. It is, shall I tell you... I think you, I know what it is. What do you think, JJ? I think... I mean, I come from Edinburgh, and I think it's when our trams opened. That's, oh. That was my oh. assumption. I'm a hundred years late. Take a uh, look at the answer. Was, of course, Edinburgh. Absolutely right. In 2014, a tram network opened in which of these UK cities? Victoria and JJ, last question in this round. What would you like to go for? Chibo, Histoire, or the other one? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm I, really c feeling contrarian. I feel like, should we just go Chibo? I don't even Chibo. know what it Fair is. Enough. We yeah. need to know what it is. Know, but, yeah. but, but... Let's uh, take a look. It is Italian oh. for food. All right. OK. Here's your question. Quale di queste verdure è tipicamente di colore arancione? Your possible answers are mm. asparago, ambarbetola rossa, Garotta. Oh. Hmm. See. Right. I think I know what two of the answers might be. <laughs> Asparagus and carrot. <laughs> um, uh, red something rosa. in the middle. Pink. Not like a beetroot, maybe? Could be beetroot. Good shout. But what does what's the question right. mean? If it's something to do with colours, which I think that might be the word in there, then I'm thinking carrots are colourful. In fact, they come in many different colours. We're just going to guess. Carrot, carota. I think that Kima might have some Arancioni trousers on. Yeah, I think so too. That's what, That's what I'm thinking. So I think you might have stumbled upon the right answer there. Is it carota? It is. No way. <laughs> well done. There's your question. Which of these vegetables oh. is typically orange? Arancioni. Right. Meaning wow. orange. Stumbling into the points. Very nice. Does it? Listen, it's not how, it's how many, right? <laughs> uh, well played, JJ and Victoria. It's the end of that oh, round. Let's take oh, a look at our scores, shall we? Kima is off the mark now with one. JJ and Victoria, you have four points each. Kevin Clifton is our leader with six Whoa. points. Well done, Kevin. I'm hot on my heels, though. Three rounds to go. Our next round to date is... Opposites attract. Fingers on buzzers, please, everybody. Your first category is... Soap operas. I'm going to show you some clues now, and the clues are the opposites of the answers. And it is the opposite of this clue. Pen pals. Yes, Victoria. Neighbours. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Neighbours, OK, yeah. People wow. living a long way away, yeah. people next yeah. to each other. Oh, yeah. Neighbours, next soap opera. The Targets. JJ. The Archer. Wow. The Archer. Yeah. Wow. That's the opposite. Yeah. The opposite yeah, 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 of the yeah, Targets, yeah, yeah. the Archers. Well done, JJ. Well done if you got that at home as well. Next soap opera. Away and Home. Yes, Kevin. <laughs> Home and away. I well, mean, what? Yeah. There go. what a godsend. Some of them are easier than others, aren't they? <laughs> well done, Kevin. Your next category is paintings. So which paintings are these the opposites of, please? Day mice. Yes, JJ. Night cat? <laughs> Night cats? <laughs> no one? I think it's Night Hawks, isn't it? <gasps> Night Hawks painting. Oh, yeah. Night oh, Hawks. Nice. There you go. Next painting. The Day Listen. Yes, JJ. The Night Speak. The Night Speak. It's not, oh. I'm afraid. Yes, Kevin. The Night Watch. The Night Watch. Oh yeah. By Rembrandt. Oh, well done. Oh, good. Well done, That's Kevin. Good. Your next category is. Creepy crawlies. Mm. What's the opposite of this, please? Mummy short arms. <laughs> oh, that's yes, one. Victoria. Daddy long legs. Daddy long legs. Okay, we're back in the group. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Okay. <laughs> Next creepy crawly. Higher deck. Kima. Fire ant. Fire ant. Well done. Oh, well done. Well, I worked out the ant. Yeah. 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 Final question in this round. What creepy crawly is this the opposite to? Cross. Cro we should be able to work this out, shouldn't we, between us? Oh. Opposite of cross. Damn. Kevin. Tick. 
Oh, well done. Yes. That's it. Well done, Kevin. Oh, oh, that was hard. That's hard. That so annoying. Uh, it's the end of round three. Let's Can take a look at the score, shall we? Uh, on Monday, Victoria was our champion. On Tuesday, Kima was our champion. Currently in the lead, Kevin with Way. nine points. Well done. Ah. Taking a three-point lead into our final two rounds. That's, uh, <laughs> oh, that's a bit nice <laughs> that's, like this on the bus. It's a little bit too much for Kevin, I think. Yeah. Two rounds to go. Round four today <laughs> is going to be... <laughs> I am not a robot, OK? All you've got to do in this round to score points is prove you're not a robot, OK? Should be easy. And it's based <laughs> on the thing you have to do on the internet to prove you're not a robot, where we'll show you a picture and you've got to click on the squares that contain a certain thing. That's all you've got to do. OK. So, Kevin, if you take your tablet out, please, we're going to show you a picture. You need to prove you're not a robot. And you need to prove you're not a robot by pressing every square that contains the yolk. The yolk. All right, I'm just gonna. I don't know. But... Mm hmm. You're going there? So we think it's the wooden thing at the, uh, at the bottom. So yeah. let's find out is Kevin a real human being? Oh, no. Uh, what? Yeah. It's a hat. The yolk is a panel across the top of a shirt. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. A panel oh, yes. across the top of a shirt. Yeah. Oh, okay. Kima, a picture for you. Let's see if we can prove you're not a robot. Oh, so there's your picture. I wonder if you could click on every square that contains a water sign, please. This is cruel. I mean, it is. I would have no idea where to start. Very cruel. I'm a Pisces sun, Cancer moon, Aries rising, but I don't know what any of these are. <laughs> you sound like an expert. Wow. Do you know what I mean? OK, I just picked one. OK, cool. So she's, listen, might as well, right? What do you think at home on this one? So let's find out. Is Kima Bob a real human being? She is not, oh. I'm afraid. You only missed oh. one out. So close. So mm. Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces were the, uh, were the correct answers there. Not a clue. Uh, Victoria. Picture for you. So far, no one is a human being on the okay. screen. <laughs> Let's see if we can find one, shall we? Here's your picture. Could you please click on any square that contains a bascule? Hmm. What the heck is a bascule? Mm. Well, I mean, that is pretty much what the question could be rephrased as. Ugh. <laughs> 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 <sighs> hmm. You sticking with that? I think we have the bascule. What do you think at home? So you think it's the one going across the... The top. The top. So let's find out. Is Victoria Derbyshire a human being? <laughs> She's not. No. Oh, it must be that it's the, it's the up and down bits. It's the basket. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh, how from, annoying. From the French for seesaw. I thought that would be just yeah. too obvious. Oh, oui, bien mean. sûr. <laughs> nothing's, too, nothing's too obvious for our question writers. No, fair enough. JJ, oh. can we please find a human being? <laughs> well... We're going to show you a picture now. We need you to prove you are not a robot. You are playing against three robots. Maybe that's why you haven't won yet. <laughs> well, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Deeply unfair. Yeah. <laughs> are you going to be this week's leading human being? Let's find out. Your picture is here. And we're looking for performers on the 1984 Band Aid single, Do They Know It's Christmas? Band Aid. Uh, I think. You sticking with that, JJ? Mm, could chuck it with that. Let's have a go. OK, so you've gone Kieran Woodward, Freddie Mercury and Bono. I might have been tempted with oh, Kemp there as I well. Think I think maybe Spandau. Mm. Yeah. Let's find out, is JJ Chalmers a real human being? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, Freddie Mercury, Freddie Mercury was, of course, he was yeah. at the concert, wasn't concert. he? But... Yeah, he was live oh, Of course he was. Yeah. Bono, Karen Woodward and Martin Kemp were the correct answers. Very well done. Everyone's a robot. Oh, no. uh, except for me. <laughs> You'll never know, because I didn't have to play. Shall we take a little look at our scoreboard? It might look familiar mm. to anybody who was previously watching the show. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good news for you, actually, Kevin. Mm. Nobody's caught up on you at all there. Mm. Uh, Kima with two, JJ with five, Victoria six. Leading into our final round, Kevin Clifton has a three-point lead. Woo. And that final round is... Oh. Answer oh. smash. Oh, of course it is. Fingers <laughs> Come on. on. <laughs> I, love, I love it, JJ, this, this is a surprise to you every day. <laughs> 
the answers are a surprise to me. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. Point for a correct answer, point off for an incorrect answer. Kevin has a three-point lead. Your first category is... Beauty accessories. Those will be the pictures. There'll be clues above. Smash them together, please. What is the name of Richard E. Grant's character in the hit 1987 film in which he plays a debauched, out-of-work actor? Yes, Victoria. With nail clippers. With nail clippers? That's right, with nail and nail clippers. Well done, Victoria. Next clue, next picture. Which soft orange fruit closely resembling a peach was once known as the Armenian apple? Apricot and swab. Apricot and swab. Oh, well done. Apricot and swab. Very well played, Kima. Next clue and next accessory. Which legendary creature said to inhabit the forests of North America is also known as Sasquatch? <laughs> yes, Kevin. Big foot spa. Big foot spa. <laughs> That's what I know. Well Big foot spa. Well yeah. done, Kevin. <laughs> next category. IT equipment. So those will be the pictures, there'll be clues above. Smash them together, please. Which 1988 Bruce Willis film is set around the fictional Nakatomi Plaza in Los Angeles? JJ. Die Hard Drive. Die Hard Drive? Wow. Well done. Well done, JJ. Finally, get this. Is it? It's this monkey off my back. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> next clue, next picture. A pig named Wilbur is one of the main characters in which 1952 children's book by E.B. White? Charlotte's yes. webcam. Charlotte's webcam. <laughs> well done. You're absolutely right, Charlotte's web and <laughs> webcam. I'll play Kima. Your next category is... <laughs> oh, yes. There are no more categories. Uh, I mean, come on. Three-point lead going into it. You got one there as well. Yeah. Oh. Surely. On Monday, our champion was Victoria Derbyshire. On Tuesday, our champion was Kima Bob. On Wednesday, our champion is... Kevin well Clifton. Well done. Come on! Oh. Well done. That's that tastes sweet, Kevin. right? Oh, it tastes so good. That tastes <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Look at how I'm sat. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, today is your day, and today you win a prize as well. Ooh. Which of these would you like to take back with you? Could I...? I'll take the hoodie, actually. Ah, oh, yeah. Kevin Clifton takes the House of Games hoodie. Congratulations, Kevin. Thank you very much. And let's take a look at the weekly leaderboard, shall we? Three winners so far this week, three different winners. But it's all very, very close. JJ and Kima, you've got six points each. Victoria, you've got nine. Kevin, you've got ten. So there's only four points between a lot of you. Two days to go, including double points Friday. Oh, yeah. Wow. Biggest day of all to win. Wow. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for playing. Uh, three winners in three days. Are we going to get four in four days tomorrow with JJ? Uh, let's find out. Shall we see you the same time, same place? See you as well, same time, same place, on the House of Games. <laughs>think it's like my brand for a second oh yeah if you comb your hair differently yeah okay suddenly you've got yourself a personalized hoodie there you go <laughs>